I've got to fix this stupid sag in front of me. Alright. She's going to ride like an FCR and get the FCR shocks. But, if I do that, the shocks will cost a lot. I gotta get a new front tire to fit the new spacing. Which means a new set of rotors, a new caliper. Then I gotta all, like, get all the brake lines and the distribution block for the brake fluid. And then, of course, the fender. What's going on, guys? <laughs> my name is Renegade, and this is my 1993 custom, very customized, Yamaha XJ600. Now, as you just heard, I kind of been having an issue, uh, and it is my fault. I fully admit that. The problem I've been having is that when I installed this front end, as great as it makes everything ride, it did change the geometry of the bike. Now, all the weight is forward onto my front suspension. This is great, but it's causing an issue because this stock suspension wasn't designed to handle it. Yeah. Oops. My bad. The easy solution? Well, I mean, there is a couple. I mean, obviously you heard the one thought I had. But there's an easier solution. That's the way we're going to go today. I have here springs from Racetech. Specifically, front springs. Now, I'm a little worried. But I've never done this before. And I can't remember what my springs are like inside. So this ought to be interesting. But brand new performance springs. And man, they are they're tough. <clears throat> so I got these from Race Tech. These are very strong springs. The springs that are in the XJ stock rated are 46.7, I believe, kilograms per millimeter. These guys are 80 kilograms per millimeter. Should make my front suspension a lot stiffer, which should work to my advantage because all the weight is forward, so it should kind of balance itself out a bit. But they sent me these springs, which to me, the golf is short. But I can't remember how far down on the, the cartridge they sit, on the dampening rod. They also sent a piece of PVC because you have to set your preload on this. And it might be very different than what's in there. So that ought to be interesting. Some washers to help with that, as well as the PVC. We'll get into that later. And of course, stickers. If y'all been watching for a while, you know how much I love my stickers. So, I'm going to grab some tools and get the bike set up and we're going to do some work. can't tell. It's a little rainy and windy outside, and it's noisy. I don't want to deal with that, so close the garage door. But you can also see now just how little space I have. Could we have a refrigerator? Not sure why. Well, I know why. But look sketchy it's because it is obviously I've got the rear up on my stand and for this one I jacked up the bottom of the motor 
just to get the weight off my front suspension. Now, this wheel is still on the ground, but my tubes are all the way up. That's gonna be a big help here. Now, as you've all seen before, I have preload caps, which are also adjusted pretty much all the way out. So first thing I gotta do, I gotta bring those all the way back. So there's almost no preload. Well, yeah, basically, so there's almost no preload. Should have known better. Obviously, I want to take that out without making a huge mess. Rag pants, right? Get your arm through. Pull the spring up inside the pant leg. Ta-da! No mess. Now here's kind of what I was afraid of. This is my stock spring. This is my new spring. See the difference here? Oi. I'm gonna guess, it's part of why they sent this. To make up that difference. You can tell this is floppy. This, not so much. This will be real good. What I've done like a moron is I dropped that all the way in. I don't have my, uh, what's it called? I don't have my magnetic pickup to pull it back out. That's a bugger. But it's alright, I need to measure from there. And I will need one of the washers that they provided me to go in as well. Drop that in. Please fall directly, straight. Cool. That's in. Now I need to measure from that washer to the ceiling lip, from that washer to the ceiling lip of my forks. Yes, this is much easier to do with the fork out, but I'm doing this on a crunch time because I want to have this bike ready to ride tomorrow because tomorrow is biker weekend. See, I have it down in the fork tube. There we go. One hundred and twenty seven point three millimeters. Now, I'm gonna measure from the O ring, from this ceiling surface right here, to the bottom of my um, my plate here. Twenty seven point one. Of course, I'm writing all this down. And now, the thickness of this. Two point one. Okay, now that we have that measured out, and I wrote it down, I did go back and double check, and I mistakenly measured the wrong point, and I'm actually looking at 103 millimeters flat inside the fork tube. So now what we're going to do is we measure the 143 minus 29.2. I hate math, by the way. In case you're all curious, I hate math. 113.8 millimeters. This is what I would need to cut that spacer pipe down to for each tube if I wanted zero preload. Now, Race Tech, you can go on their website and do the little calculator. For my weight, suggests anywhere between 15 and 21 millimeters of preload. I also have these preload caps. So, I'm going to split the difference because I'd rather be a little over just in case. <clears throat> and 
we add, I'm going to split the difference at 18. Now the 18 millimeters, which was where I split the difference to my original zero preload, that's what we're going to cut it down to now. 131.8 millimeters. So I'm going to measure that out and cut it off and we'll get back to it. Now I've checked my oil level, I made sure everything was good. Now I'm ready to start installing stuff. Now, if you noticed earlier, a piece popped out. This is the preload for this bike, which as you can tell, is a good chunk of this pipe I cut. Now, I could cut this down and put a washer on this to get a spacer here, but no, I'm not gonna do that. I'd rather have one piece than have two pieces bouncing around inside my forks. So, if you're doing uh, one of these conversions on a bike that has one of these in the fork, you can take it out and ditch it and use this. This is what I'm doing. Now this is the tricky part. I gotta put this back in. With that one on, now I gotta move over to that side. Obviously, I'm still zeroed out on my preload as best I can, but I won't know how much to add until I actually ride it. So I'm gonna take care of the other side now. Since I did that, I don't need to film it, do I? Y'all want me to see this, right? It's all once. Pretty simple. To be clear, <clears throat> stock spring with the spacer, race tech spring with the spacer, and of course, my cap. This should be a really nice mod. I really hope so. All right. So, out of the bike. It's really cold right now. And we're gonna test these, whoops. <laughs> I tucked in my mirror so I wouldn't hit it and I forgot to put it back out. Definitely feel firmer. But are they any better? I'm still noticing a little bit of sag in them. A little bit of a soft spot. Well, so I'm thinking I might crank up the preload just a smidge. That's why we have these adjusters, you know? So we're going to give it a run first and see how it feels. Definitely feels a lot better though than my stock springs. Definitely feel better. But like I said, I think uh, I think they're a little soft. I think they need to be cranked up just a smidgen. So we're gonna pull over. I'm gonna do that. That's neutral. That's fine. But of course, I was smart. Can't find my zipper pull. I was smart, I brought my ratchet with the proper size. When doing this, folks, count your turns. Ready? Quarter turn, half turn. Quarter 
quarter turn, half turn. Let's try that. And yes, I'm aiming to hit all the bumps right now. Ooh, that was a good bump. Felt really nice. Oh, that one was a little rough. That was smooth. I think another half turn on each and we'll be set. Now the reason I'm doing this is actually because I bought the forks. Uh, I bought the fork springs for the model. I did not buy the forks for the setup. What does that mean? Well, I still bought springs that are for the XJ600 for the, you know, even though I'm riding with an FZR setup. That makes one full turn. That makes one full turn. Yeah, that's much better. There, of course, is a proper way of doing your preload tuning. And I based mine off of race text uh, information. But the proper way to really do your fine tuning. Oh, that was so much better. <laughs> involves you sitting on your bike in all your race gear or your riding gear, whatever and having somebody measure out how far the forks travel. Now, as I do not have anybody to assist me with that, that's a little more difficult for me. Oh, that's so much better. But I have always been in the mindset that you know, mathematical tuning is wonderful, but it doesn't mean squat if it doesn't actually work out that way on your vehicle. Meaning, oh yeah, that's better. If math says one thing and you ride that, and you find a better way that is more comfortable for you, well then, go with the way that's more comfortable. In the end, what matters is your comfort. It's not about what the math says your comfort should be. It's about what is actually comfortable for you. I like them. These are nice. These are a lot stiffer than my stock XJ Springs. I went on Racetech's website and I punched in my model and I punched in my weight and it gave me this suggestion for these performance springs. As I said in the beginning of the video, the spring rate on these springs, stock, the stock XJ600 springs, is 46.7 kilograms per millimeter. The ones I put in are 80 kilograms per meter. Makes a hell of a difference. There you go. Now I've upgraded my rear suspension. Now I've upgraded my front suspension, which fits better with the uh, style of the bike now that I've changed over its seating position, riding position, whatever. I absolutely suggest these springs. If you'd like to get a set of your own, I don't have a promo code or anything, but there'll be a link for it down in the description. I'll put one for the Race Tech Springs and then one for the uh, the Springs specifically for the XJ600. Guys, I hope you all liked the video. If you did, please do remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you have any questions or comments about anything that you saw today. And uh, if you're not already, please do subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload a new video. So remember, y'all keep rocking and rolling. I'm gonna keep taking care of business. 
and I'll see you in the next video.